This is an instructional video for the superficial peristernal intercostal plane block. The equipment you will need includes sterile gloves, two syringes of 20cc, 0.25% uh, uh, ropivacaine by diluting ropivacaine 0.5% with normal saline uh, 1 to 1, uh, sterile ultrasound jelly, chlorhexidine, and an echogenic needle that's 80 millimeters long. First, use the chlorhexidine to prepare the entire chest, uh, including the sternal dressing. You can count the ribs from the level of the clavicle downwards. You will perform the block at T23 and T45. The block is an in-plane approach from caudal to cranial. You want to puncture the needle just beside the sternal dressing, but not into the sternal dressing. Technique one is to do the block performance between the ribs. If you can see a very good plane, uh, just be careful of the pneumothorax risk and don't go too far. You are aiming for the layer that is below the pectoralis major and above the internal intercostal muscle. You should give a test dose to uh, see if you are in the correct plane. And here you can see that it is in the correct plane because you can see the uh, pectoralis major muscle lifting up very nicely and back directionally. Uh, at this level, uh, at T23, uh, feel free to give 10 mils. You can see excellent bidirectional spread there. Technique two is uh, you will aim for the rib itself. Okay, again, uh, here you should be below the level of the pectoralis major, uh, but above the rib. You give a little test dose uh, once you hit bone to see the spread, and here the spread again is very good. Uh, and uh, after a few test doses, uh, then we inject another 10 mils. Another technique that you could consider is to walk off the rib. So uh, you can see the plane uh, between the pectoralis major and the internal intercostal pretty well. Uh, first, you hit the rib, okay, uh, and then uh, you try to um, uh, just walk off gently. Here, unfortunately, the uh, fascia of the pectoralis major is quite thick, so uh, quite some pressure uh, was necessary. Uh, to penetrate that fascia, so be very careful not to uh, accidentally cause a pneumothorax by accidentally going too deep. So it's a very controlled pressure. After you get through the fascia, you inject a bit of a test dose to examine the spread. Oh, we are still intramuscular. Uh, haven't gotten through uh, to the correct layer yet, so we'll advance a little bit more. Uh, you, can, you can see it's intramuscular uh, because uh, you can see the muscle fibers um, basically uh, uh, expanding. And here, after we uh, advance a little bit, now it's in the correct layer. You can see this black uh, uh, lake forming with the pectoralis, ma pectoralis major uh, lifting off. Now we're in the correct layer and uh, we can give uh, 10 cc's here. Uh, here's the example of um, the, the spread not being optimal. I walked off the rib okay, here, and first of all, uh, at the level of the rib, I gave a little test dose of an uh, injection. And you can see that the pectoralis major lift off uh, well, and it was in the right layer. However, I subsequently advanced a little bit and uh, uh, did an injection. At the time, I did not realize, uh, but I'm actually uh, performing a intramuscular injection uh, into the internal intercostal muscle. And this is why the uh, local anesthetic did not spread more cranially, but is limited 
uh, at the level of this interspace. In retrospect, what I should have done is to uh, retract the needle until it is in the correct fascial layer between the pectoralis major and internal intercostal uh, and uh, perform the uh, local anesthetic injection there.